Now, I don't know if there's anyone out there like me, but I love a good lightning storm. Do you? They are, they are amazing. They are wonderful. And I have seen some good ones in my lifetime. Some of those that just flash across the sky up in the clouds and some of those that send those giant lightning bolts down, crashing down somewhere with that boom. I love it. There's something so majestic about it and beautiful. So if you look at the pictures, I can't see them right now, but I trust that they're showing them to you right now. Oh, I see. There is a little monitor for me. Look at that. Look at those rays of lightning coming down out of the clouds. The power that is there in those lightning bolts. Now, because I love lightning, I've, I've watched several documentaries about lightning, and I've read some articles about lightning to figure out, really, what is it? You know, in ancient times, people believed that lightning was fire. They thought that it was fire from the heavens or fire from the sky. But when Benjamin Franklin tied a key to a kite and allowed it to be struck by lightning, he proved to our modern world that lightning is really electricity. It is not fire. It is electricity. Now, you know why we might be talking about lightning right now during our series, Plug In, because we're talking about plugging in to the power. Now, here's a couple more facts about lightning that you may not know. Lightning is so powerful. The charge in that lightning bolt is so powerful that it is scientifically proven to be five times hotter than the surface of the sun. Can you imagine? Lightning is also a force more powerful than the blast of an atom bomb, just in a very concentrated stream. And did you know that lightning is responsible for around 3,000 deaths a year? Can you imagine getting struck by a power force that, that strong? Some people do survive it. They live to tell the story because for some reason they were grounded to something or something happened where the lightning bolt went through their body, burned them, shred their clothes, and they survive. But many people do not survive because of the sheer power of lightning. It is pure electricity. Now, how does lightning work? It's kind of interesting what happens as the storm clouds are shifting around. It creates a field of charged particles, of ions. And they are negatively charged and positively charged. And those charged ions, when they come together and connect, they make an explosion that we know as a lightning bolt. And in fact, most things in nature or on the face of the planet are emitting some kind of, of charge of ion particles. Each of us probably, if we had like a ion detecting lenses, we could look out and see little threads of ions going right up from the tops of our heads. This is why when there's a lightning storm, what do we do? We go inside, right? We don't want to be a target for the ions or for the lightning to come down and strike us. Another interesting thing that I found out about lightning is this, and this comes from a NOVA documentary that I watched, and it says lightning will often strike the tallest structure, but not always. You might think that the tallest thing standing is going to be the one that gets the lightning strike. It says here that any object, no matter its size, height, or composition, can be struck. So how does this relate to what we've been talking about? How does this relate to God and his power? Well, we talked about the Bible, and here's how I'll kind of put it for you this morning. The Bible is the place where we go to to read about the experiences that other people have had with the power of God. And by doing so, we find that the power of God can enter into our lives too because we gain a knowledge of him. We gain an understanding of his character, of his love, through watching how he has interacted with generations from the past all the way up until um, the future in Revelation. We can see the hand of God. We can read it there. But prayer, this is the thing about prayer. Is prayer simply the way that we have a conversation with God? Is prayer simply the way that we let God know what we're thinking and feeling? 
Or is prayer, like Pastor Pagan said, is prayer power? And there is power in prayer. We're going to talk about how that happens. But for me, prayer is not like the scripture, the story of God's interaction in the lives of others. Prayer is our opportunity to experience that power in our lives right now, today. Prayer is for our personal experience with the power of God. When we pray, something special happens. It allows God into our story. Let's talk about how that happens. From the very beginning, God created Adam and Eve. We went back to that story, and we're going to go there again right here this morning. If you have your Bibles, open with me to the book of Genesis. We're talking about why, why or how prayer is powerful and why. Why is prayer powerful? Why is it even necessary? Do we just need something to do? Is God wasting our time? Or is there a reason why when we pray it makes a difference? We're going to look at that reason. Genesis chapter 1, the very beginning, the creation of humanity. Let's read it together starting in verse 26. It says, then God said... Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, and over all the earth. What did God do after he created mankind? He established humanity as an authority over all the earth. That's what happens right here in this book of Genesis. It says, let them rule over the fish and the birds and the air, the livestock, and over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. And then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. When God created this earth, he then created humanity to be the caretakers or the rulers of this earth. He gave it to us as a gift. And not only did he do that, but he gave Adam and Eve the right to be the authority or his representatives, the representatives of God's will and authority on the earth. It was their job to be his ambassadors. He created them for that purpose. Now we all know what happens in this story, don't we? The deceiver comes into the picture. And what does he do? He tricks Adam and Eve into doing something that has changed the history of the world forever. He tricked them into giving up the authority that God had given them over the earth. And then he stole it. Even Jesus himself calls the devil the prince of this world or the ruler of this world because he stole what was rightfully given to humanity through Adam and Eve, the authority to rule over the earth and to represent God's will here. Now at the beginning of creation, God's will and the will of humanity were the same, weren't they? They were together, they were united. Adam and Eve were fully in the will of God. So when they were ruling over the earth, they were ruling over the earth the way that God would have them rule over the earth. But when sin entered the picture, when Adam and Eve gave up the authority that God had given them, it set in motion a series of consequences that would be very difficult to reverse. And from that time until now, human beings have been in a battle of the wills. Because after sin, instead of exercising God's will, instead of wanting to to make our decisions and to rule by God's will, we began to exercise our own will. And our selfish will has created the separation that now exists between God and humanity. From the beginning, there was no separation. But that sinful battle of the wills created a separation that could only be repaired in one way. Now, when you think about the power that God has, the power that he had to give life, 
And when you think about the power of lightning, do you believe that the power of God is more powerful than lightning? I do too, but think about how powerful lightning is. Think about how powerful that is. And then to think that God's power is more powerful than that. When we were separated from God, when human will and God's will were separated, something terrible happened. Because now, as God had created it, much of what is his will, he makes contingent upon the actions and attitudes of human beings. Did you know that? Have you ever wondered why God doesn't just do what he wants to do? Why he doesn't just save us all? Why, why we have to end up suffering if he loves us so much? Why would this happen? One of the biggest reasons is because of the battle of the wills. Because the authority of the earth that first belonged to Adam and Eve, now captured by the devil, and God and humanity is trapped in the middle. And we exercise our will on God's behalf sometimes, and then our selfish will is pulled by the attraction of the sinful nature, and we exercise our will on that behalf. And whenever we exercise our will outside of God's will, we block God and his will from having the power that it should have on the earth. And you know, human history has shown us the consequences of what it, what it is to exercise human will. Hasn't it? You think of the atrocities that have happened, the horrible things that humanity has done to itself and to each other throughout human history because of us exercising our own will. This was not God's plan from the beginning. His plan was for us to be connected to his will so that his power could come through our human will to be exercised on this earth. Now, when authority was stolen by the devil, God was not ab about to let that separate him from us forever because he created us as his special children. He doesn't want to be separated from us, and so he devised a plan a plan to get that authority back, and a plan to reconnect us from the separation that divides us. Because, you know, when you think about a lightning bolt, if I had something that I wanted to plug in, I mean, you'd think this thing would work off of electricity. You know, I have a cable here. If I plugged it into something, I could plug it into pure electricity, right? What would happen if I took a cord and I plugged whatever it was, my camera, my vacuum cleaner, and I plugged it straight into the receptor of a lightning bolt, what would happen? It, it would be completely destroyed, wouldn't it? Because the connection is not the appropriate connection. That electricity has to be channeled through the right channel in order for it not to harm me in order for it not to break whatever it is that's plugging in. Lightning is too powerful, way too powerful for us to use it as a power source for our appliances. It would destroy those things. And you know, when we had sin enter into our lives and into our world, the separation between God and man made it so that God's power was too much for us to connect to on our own. If we were to try to do that with our sinful nature, we would be destroyed. You cannot plug into a lightning bolt. You have to have something that bridges the gap between the lightning power and the thing that you're plugging in. And this is where Jesus comes in. You know the passage in Matthew 28, 18, where Jesus says, what does he say? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Do you know what that means? That means that the authority that God gave to Adam and Eve from the beginning that was stolen by the devil was taken back by Jesus Christ for humanity. Amen? That means now that the authority that was originally intended to exercise God's will here on earth now belongs to humanity again through the person of Jesus Christ. And now we have something very valuable as a human race when we were separated from God and unable any longer to plug into the power that he offered because his power was too great for our sinful nature, now we have a great heavenly extension cord. 
we have a reconnection with the source of power that God had given to us in the beginning of time. God's will and human will were the same. But now we have to let God know that his will is invited to, to be here on this earth. We have to invite his will. We have to connect with him. Humanity still lives selfishly. And you know, the, the consequences of our selfishness separated us further and further from God. Jesus died on the cross. He rose again. He is our connector, our extension cord, our power cord, and now we can reach the power source. But here's the interesting thing. It's not like magic. <laughs> it's not like miracles. It's not just about what we can get for ourselves, but prayer is the avenue. Prayer is the vehicle by which we connect to the Father through Jesus Christ. That is prayer. Why is there power in prayer? Because when we pray, what is happening? We are telling God that our will is in line with his will. And when our will is in line with his will, he has the power to act in full force for humanity. This makes me think of a couple of things. One is, I wonder how many of us have not allowed God's power to work in our lives or in the world around us because we have failed to connect with his will through Jesus Christ. Because we haven't prayed. I get this picture in my mind of the lightning bolt, of the storm cloud, the blessings coming down from above, looking for some charged particles coming up from us. These would be our prayers going up to heaven. Our prayers going up, God's blessings coming down. What would happen if the blessings were trying to come down and there were no ions, there was no charged particles going up? What would happen? No power, right? No lightning, no power. In fact, there's a passage that we find in the book of Ezekiel where God is talking about the people were being wicked and it says, I looked over the face of the earth to find someone who would build up the wall and who would stand in the gap so that I could save them. And I found no one. And so they were destroyed. Do you know what that means? It means that there was no one there telling God that his will was welcome in the lives of people. That his will was the authority on the face of the earth. Because humanity was given the earth as a gift and unless we invite God's authority to be the authority then the devil has an inroad he can exercise authority here and unless we invite our will to be in line with God's will then we exercise our own will and we know what a disaster that causes when human beings exercise their will apart from God's will, it causes death and destruction and pain and suffering. It causes the world that we live in. So, Jesus has provided a way for us to connect to the Father. Because, you know, if we tried to connect, we would be destroyed. But Jesus tells us, if you love me, if you believe in me, then you have a connection to the Father. In, in the book of John, he talks very specifically about prayer, and this is what he says. He's talking to his disciples. He's telling them that, they will, that he will go away and come back. He's trying to tell them that he's going to die and be resurrected, and they don't understand what he's saying. And he says, but when you see me again, you will have joy. This is John chapter 16, verses 23 to 27. He says, at that time, you will not need to ask me for anything. The truth is, you can go directly to the Father and ask him, and he will grant your request because you use my name. In other words, Jesus is telling us that you now have access back to the original source of power that you were created to be connected to. You now have an extension cord. You now have a way that will not destroy you to plug in to the power of your creator to the power of God and this is what it says you haven't done this before asking in my name 
Ask and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters in parables, but the time will come when this will not be necessary. I will tell you plainly about my Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you because you love me and believe that I came from God. I think about how little blessing we receive because we fail to connect to the power that is offered to us. But can you imagine what would happen? Can you imagine what would happen if we would start to send up our prayers? And we could see those little streams going up higher and higher. And you know what I love? That lightning doesn't always strike the tallest structure. The documentary said that any object, regardless of its height or size or composition, whatever it's made of, it doesn't matter. Any object can be struck. So in case you're sitting out there this morning saying, well, my prayers will never get there high enough. My prayers will never be the first ones to get there, to get the blessing, to get the power. You are wrong. Any object, any person who decides to pray and to line their will with God's will, to put away their selfishness and their own decisions based on on temptation and evil desires or just the desires of this world, the pleasures of this world, if we are willing to put those aside and align ourselves with God through prayer, the power will come into your life. The power will come into my life. And it's not just any power. I want to show a picture, this final picture that I had. It is a picture of the city of Dallas, and you can see all of these bolts of lightning coming down. Now, if we imagine that instead of lightning bolts, these were the pictures of power coming down from God into the lives of people, what do you think of that picture? Isn't this what our cities and homes should look like every day? If we were to take a picture of the power coming down for, from our prayers going up, it should look like this picture. Bolts of lightning should be happening everywhere. The power of God is more powerful than a lightning bolt. And a lightning bolt is five times hotter than the sun. A lightning bolt is greater than the blast of an atomic bomb. Do you think that that's enough power to do something in your life? Do you think that that's enough power to do something in the lives of people around you? Do you believe that God's power can connect with you? Do you believe that you can connect with God's power? Because I do. My question for each of us this morning is, are we willing not to just talk to God, to communicate with him, but to invite the power of his will into our lives? So that power explosion can happen. And it's not just about getting what we want. It is 100% about our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because the only reason that we have access to the power is because Jesus has provided it for us. Jesus has taken away the separation. We no longer need to worry about being destroyed by the power of God because Jesus says, you don't even need me to ask on your behalf anymore. You have a direct connection to your Father because He loves you. And His power is for you. It is for your life from the smallest to the greatest because God designed this earth for us to exercise His will and His authority on His behalf. And I pray that we would not rob our own lives of blessings and that we would not rob others of blessings by forgetting to invite the power by forgetting to send up those prayers so that the blessings can come down with explosive power. I want to know if you're committed. I want to know if you are excited to connect with the power, not just the power of the stories from the Bible that teach us about the character of God and that bless us so much, but double the power, triple the power by experiencing that power in your own life through the power of a direct connection to the throne of God through prayer. And it isn't just a conversation. It is the power of the universe, the power of the creator, 
the power of heaven here on earth. Now I want to ask you, how many of you have heard the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray? We've all heard that one, haven't we? The Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. This prayer includes everything that we're talking about right here in our worship this morning. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew chapter 5. That's where we find this prayer. We find it in a couple of other places. But Matthew chapter 5 is where we're going to look this morning. This is how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And listen very carefully, because I know you've heard this prayer a thousand times. In fact, you can rattle it off because you've memorized it without even thinking about the words, can't you? If I started it, we would all do it together. You don't even have to listen to what you're saying, but I want you to put that aside and listen this morning to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. And now here's the invitation. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you understand what's happening there? That God gave us the right to exercise authority here, but what he's saying is it, when you invite my authority, my kingdom to come to earth, it is just like it is in heaven. We make that invitation. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And remember, we talked about in 2 Peter that a knowledge of Jesus Christ gives us divine power that gives us what? Everything we need, right? Everything we need for life and godliness. And look at what the Lord's Prayer said. Give us this day our daily bread. Is that part of everything we need? That's the most basic of our needs and then he goes to the most extreme of our needs because he said and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors how is it possible for us to forgive there's only one way that it's possible for us to forgive and that is when we are in line with the will of God because it is not human nature to forgive it is human nature to hate to destroy to pay back that's human nature, but it is God's nature to forgive. We are only able to forgive because he has shown us how to forgive, because he has forgiven us. So we, from the smallest need to the most basic need for bread to the greatest need for salvation, we invite God into our lives. And then it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Remember our passage in 2 Peter where it said, that you would be able to participate in the divine character and to not be taken by the desires of this world or to be destroyed by an evil nature. The same thing, we're asking God to keep his promise. And then it says, for yours is the kingdom and the what? The power and the glory forever. Amen. Whose power is it? It is God's power. But God gives it to you. He gives it to me so that we may have everything we need for life and godliness. Will you connect to the power? Will you send up your prayers so that his blessings can come down? I guarantee you that if you change the way that you pray, that if you that if your goal in prayer is not to ask God for all the things that you want or need, but if your goal in prayer is to simply tell God that your will is a channel for, through which his will can be exercised on the earth, your life will change. Your life and the lives of everyone around you will change. And did you know we can invite the power into other people's lives if they don't know how to invite it for themselves? God has given us permission to invite his power into the lives of others. What a blessing. Before we close, we are going to actually practice the power of prayer together this morning. And I want you to practice it throughout the day. I've seen little huddles of prayer. And I want you to imagine now every time that you pray that there is a stream of charged particles going up. 
And that when, when that stream connects with the will of God through Jesus Christ, the power comes down. Do you know how many people were praying for me backstage? I could just see the lightning bolt going off the top of my head. I knew that God would be with us because of those prayers. And today we're going to pray for someone special. Two young women came to ask me if we could pray for their friend, Giovanni. Giovanni Lopez. He's a young man, Pathfinder age. And right now he is laying in a hospital bed dying of cancer. They thought they found the cancer, but they were only looking in that one spot and the cancer made it to his brain. And he's struggling for life right now. They asked if we could pray together. And you know what? It couldn't have been a more appropriate request for this message this morning. This morning we're going to, together, send up a stream of prayers with Giovanni's name before the throne of heaven where God's blessings are waiting to be poured out on his behalf. We don't know what God will decide to do, but we know that if we align our will with his will, that something powerful will happen.